Saturday. Any other announcements? Thank you. Uh, today, this is uh, for all the women that are here, the men fellowship group that we reestablished and having a good time. We bought, bought uh, we're doing the coffee hour today, and we have flowers for, for all the ladies. Because so, we love you all. <laughs> what a wonderful surprise. Any other announcements while they're handing out the, our flowers? Did I hear a yes there was? And the, any other announcements? your hearts and minds as we enter into a time of worship. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> From fishing fleets in busy harbors, God gathers simple sailors. Through persecution and injustice, God calls brave prophets. When we least expect it, Christ gathers in us and calls us to follow him. Let us gather and answer Christ's call. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship in your bulletins. Called by God, we have come to worship. Called by Christ, we have come to follow. Called by the Spirit, we have come to rejoice. All together, we will listen and pray. Thank you. Our opening prayer today, would you join me, please? Holy God, we gather to sing your praise and hear your word. Speak to us now that we may be wise enough to perceive your call. Strengthen us now, that we may be brave enough to answer when you call. Guide us now, that we may follow 
You don't, you don't want a kiss from God? You love God. Somebody's hiding from me. Uh oh, they're under the chairs now. All right, so who do I give your kids to? Who do you want me to give it to? Okay, Mom, I'm going to give you his kiss. Mom. <laughs> Okay, so now I want you to help me sing this song. You can stay right there, and you can decide if you want to help me sing this song, because the song now that we're going to sing is Lord Prepare Me to Be a Sanctuary. So I want you all to help me sing this song, because this song is about asking God to help us, to prepare us to be able to say thank you with our whole heart and with our whole mind, and to be able to give ourselves to others. So, now we're going to sing our song. I'm waiting for it to come up on the screen. <laughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy.
all that you see the song. <laughs> now, the rock stars can go down to church, church school. Thank you. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> oh. All righty, let's send our kids off to church school. So now I ask you to share your joys and share your concerns with this community. To know that by sharing them, that we hold them dear in our hearts. And when we go to our prayer time, we're including them. So if you would like to share a joy or a concern, please raise your hand. And one 
when the deacons will come and give you the mic because I want people to be able to hear you. That's why I ask you to speak in the mic because some of us are hearing challenged. So <laughs> let's make sure that all of us can hear. Yeah. We have ten dollars. Mm -hmm. I would like to share with you that I went and visited Wendy yesterday. She's doing better. She's now working on a recumbent bike, or as her brother refers to it, spin class. Uh, and I, I just wanted to say a big shout out to the prayer shawl ministry. I took Wendy at prayer shawl a while back, and Jimmy and I believe that Edie Garland made it. She uses it as a blanket. It goes from her shoulders down over her feet. She used it to wrap around her. She uses it as a pillow. And she said, you can feel the warmth and the love that was put into it. So thank you. I, um, I want to uh, tell you that John Michelle had his annual checkup at Dartmouth again. This is his 10th year after the surgery. And he's got another okay for another year. They, he does have fluid around the graft area, so this is a concern, and that's why they keep checking him and checking him. But he's good to go. Next year, he gets an echo as well as a CT scan. And uh, my second concern, well, that was the celebration. <laughs> the concern is um, we continue to pray for David and Gilman because they're going through a lot, and Gilman is um, Gilman has cancer, and, and it's a, a long process for him. But David's mother now has a, a tumor, and she received her first chemotherapy um, a Thursday, and she had a negative reaction to it. So now they're mixing different chemicals, I guess, but it's, they're in a mess. So if you would remember David and Gilman, and now Barbara, Barbara Morrison, thank you. Dear God, we feel your presence here. We know you have heard our joys and you have heard our concerns. We know it just doesn't just float up into the air, that it has impact because it goes out into this community, it touches hearts, and hearts gather together to pray for one another. We thank you for community. We thank you for this community. 
Oh, dear God, you know, we're still struggling with the poison called cancer. Please, God, let those that you have designed to do the research find a way. Find a way. In the meantime, we're so glad that nobody has to go through the terrible ordeal alone. That your presence is with them and the doctors and the nurses and all who come in contact with them. So we thank you that no one has to travel up that road alone. Remember those who are entering into the grief process. Ah. To think to be in your senior, senior years and to have a child die before you do. There can be lots of questions about that. And we know that there's no answers, but we're glad that we can have the question because we know you understand us. Because we are created by you. And we're human and in our humanity we have those questions. But you continue to wrap us up in your arms to let us know, I got you and it'll be just fine. It's a long road, but again, you don't travel the road alone. So we remember the Carlsons, and we remember other families that have entered into the season of, of grief and bereavement. We lift up those caregivers that are taking care of their family members who, without them in the home, they couldn't be there. And we lift up those caregivers that every day, as often as they can, they go to the care facilities to be present with their loved ones and their friends so that no one is alone. We thank you, God. We're very grateful. We're very grateful. There's so much that's going on in the world today that we don't understand. And all we can do is come to you and say, Lord, please help. We lift up our sister churches in Zimbabwe. Lord, please help. We lift up the nation and we say, Lord, please help. We ask for wisdom. Let the wisdom be bestowed upon us and let us be wisdom in the world. Thank you, God, for this body of God, for this body of Christ, for First Congregational Church Wakefield. Thank you for these committed people to be in the church today, to nurturing one another, and to be your hands and feet in the world. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. And now with our collective voices, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, our
Is it a black hymnal? No. On page 433. Let's join buddies. Yeah. Number 433 in our hymnal. I'll play it through the first time. Only because it's such a pretty song. I don't like to watch it. I'll play it through the door.
Stand if you're able, please, for our gospel reading. <coughs> Our gospel today is from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 1 through 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were the partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. These are the words of God for the people of God. And even today, the Holy Spirit leaves room for us to hear what it means for us at this time. You may be seated. <clears throat> My spiritual journey began as a little black girl in Kansas City, Kansas, raised in the Black Baptist tradition. I have never been unchurched. When I went away to college, Grinnell College in Grinnell, Iowa, I joined a handful of black students on campus. We gathered, bringing all the different black faith traditions together, Baptist, Pentecostal, African Methodist Episcopalian, Catholic, United Methodist, and UCC. Unbeknownst to me at that time, Grinnell College is historically affiliated with the UCC. We each pray in our own tradition, in tongues, without tongues, quiet meditation, holding rosary beads, and on our knees. Music brought us all together to worship one God. When I left college, a young black girl listening to hear how I am to make an impact on the world, I knew that God had many voices. And when I went to a black church, or a white church, or a Catholic church, or a synagogue, or a Church of God in Christ, or a Jehovah Witness gathering, and they all thought and taught the voice of their God was the true voice of God, I just knew they were wrong. My gut told me they were wrong. And as I grew in my faith, I knew the feeling in my gut was the Holy Spirit. After receiving the call to ministry and accepting the call, I was ordained. In Bible college, I just knew that was not the path to prepare me to serve God's people. God kept saying to me in my ear, stuff to show that self-approved. I went to seminary, an ecumenical progressive seminary supported by the American Baptist churches. The seminary opened my ears to liturgy, the order of public worship, and how that order comes from many traditions of the Jewish Christian faith. Yes, the voice of God has many voices. When I decided 10 years ago to share my gifts and talents with the UCC as an ordained clergy person, one course I had to take 
was the polity course to learn the principles and beliefs of the UCC. I knew I was where I was supposed to be when I was introduced to the English Puritan minister, John Robinson, who led a separatist group in the 1600s, the nonconformists, the first congregationalists, who wished to separate from the Church of England so they could follow what they believed to be pure and more simplified forms of church government and worship. The words he said to this group as they prepared to sail to America on the Mayfire are words the UCC still shares today. I am verily persuaded the Lord held more truth yet to break forth from his holy word. Many of us believe this is a timely piece of godly wisdom. When I read Robinson's words, if God reveals anything to you by any other instrument of his, be as ready to receive it as you were to receive any truth by my ministry. This early congregationalist knew God had many voices. He understood in the 1600s we needed to see and hear beyond our differences and listen to hear the instrument God is using to heal and expand life. He encouraged those early congregationalists, as one colleague said, to have a pilgrim spirit as opposed to being stuck on the treadmill of religion but to be carried away by the move of the Spirit into the next phase of God's blessings. In our Gospel text today, Jesus is teaching to the crowd, and he sees Simon far off. Simon is tired. He's cleaning his nets and getting ready to pack it up and go home empty-handed, no fish. Jesus interrupts him the first time, by just getting in the boat and asking him to pull a little way from the shore. The crowd is pressing in on Jesus and he needs space to continue to teach. Simon is a fisherman. He is docked. Yes, he hears Jesus teaching, but he probably is more focused on getting home after a long day that was not profitable. Jesus did not ask permission to get in the boat. He just got in. A vessel was available, and he used it and proceeded to continue teaching from inside of Simon's boat. Simon, a tired fisherman who had a lousy day. <laughs> then Jesus, a carpenter by trade, tells the fisherman to go out into the deep waters and drop his net. I can only imagine Simon's face. Really? <laughs> and where did you get off telling me, <laughs> the fisherman, what to do? But we didn't hear Simon say any of that. But what we did hear Simon say is, we've been fishing all day. And we caught nothing. But if you say, I will do it. The text does not tell us if this was a place Simon had been earlier in the day or if this was a different spot. And, with, and, and, and all we're told is all we're told is that Jesus said, Row out into the deep. Into the deep implies taking a risk, possibly going into danger, and definitely doing something different. It also implies a level of trust. Jesus had trust that Simon would do it because it takes a lot of guts to say, row out into the deep. This is the, he's not a fisherman. 
and drop your net. But it also takes a lot of trust for Simon to say, on your word, if you say so, I will. There is more truth yet to break forth from God's holy word. What does it take to have a pilgrim spirit? Can you recognize the instruments that God is using to captivate people with Jesus' love? Is your boat, is your faith, is your heart big enough for the pilgrim spirit to just step in and guide you into the deep? Or are you stuck on the treadmill of religion, unable to see or hear or sense the instruments the Holy Spirit has provided for every ear to hear and every knee to bow to say, Jesus is Lord. Simon was obedient. And he was poured out a blessing he did not have room for. He had to signal for his partners to come and help. In the 1600s, John Robinson was telling the early Congregationalists when they arrived to America to go deep, there is nothing, there is not anything or anybody God cannot use to restore, to revive, and to strengthen the people of God to catch people, to captivate people with Jesus' love. The United Church of Christ is called to be a united and uniting church that they may all be one. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, diversity. In all things, Charity. Love and diversity is the UCC's greatest asset. We are people of possibility. That's why we belong to the UCC. We see the possibility past what is in front of our face because our hearts move us past into the deep. And sometimes all we need to do is to be reminded to go deep, and it's okay. It would be just fine, because God will meet us there. And whatever we need will be provided for us. So our boats are long and wide. So let's move from the shores and go into the deep. And remember, Jesus said, do not be afraid. <laughs> Join me in the response to the word. When all is pointless, it is easy to give up. We will drop our nets and leave. When the harvest is scarce and the needs are great, we will drop our nets and leave.